Madeline, Madeline complimented my haircut this morning because we got home from camp and Bree and I were exhausted. And she looked at me and she said, Ian, you need a haircut. So there's a picture of me uh, water tubing from uh, camp, the last day at camp. That's me. Um, so you do get pretty rough at camp. Um, and she said, you need to shave and cut your hair. And so I, I, I clean up pretty well. Uh, <laughs> and I thought, I thought that hearing Russ and Travis speak all week, I would, I would kind of be tired and be ready for somebody else. But when he was going preaching this morning during the announcements, I mean, who can preach during announcements? But I was ready to let him finish and just preach the whole morning because for him and, and Russ to, to be able to sit under them is such a blessing, and, and I'm so thankful for that. And I, I feel like JV, like the JV varsity, you know, pl- playing in the NFL this morning. And so I, I appreciate your grace this morning. And Kent was great, and he, he gave you those numbers of the salvations and baptisms. And do you know what that is? That's fruit. That's fruit of a ministry that's changing lives. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Because I believe that God is calling each of you. And that he's calling Summit Community Church to produce fruit. Each one of you sitting in these seats this morning is a stakeholder, is a shareholder in this body that we call Summit Community Church. And we all are equally responsible for the fruit that we do or do not produce. So this morning, we have to start by knowing that we are called to bear fruit. In John 15, 8, it says, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. And so as we kind of unpack this, we're going to be going through three passages that each tell the same story about how we are called to bear fruit and the consequences of what happens when we don't. And the first one that I really relate to is Matthew 3. And you can uh, follow along in Matthew chapter 3, starting in verse 7. But when he, this is John the Baptist, saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, it's a way to welcome somebody, Who warn you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children from Abraham. Because that's my story. I was raised going to church. I was a religious person. But my plan for my life did not include bearing fruit as a priority. Because I had two years of community college, right? That was my plan. I had a scholarship. I was going to go two years community college. I was going to transfer to a SUNY school in architecture. That was going to be my associate's degree. I was going to go to a SUNY school and transfer for architecture. I was going to intern for my uncle. And then I was going to become an architect, right? That was my plan. Was bearing fruit in there at all? No. And I'll I'll tell you what happened because... I saw my uncle, who's a very successful architect in New York, works on Long Island, very successful. He builds beautiful houses. But I realized something when I looked at his life. For all of his professional success, his life was a mess. He abused alcohol. He had gone through two marriages. And I could see that this man was not happy, even with all of the success. And so I realized that I needed to bear fruit in my life, and and God got a hold of me, and I (laughs) thank him for that, because I don't know where I would be. But I didn't want to live a life that didn't produce fruit. I didn't want to look back and regret what I had done. And so the question we need to ask ourselves this morning, are we bearing fruit in our lives? Can we look at our lives and see the fruit 
of transformation. Can we read through Galatians 5 with the fruit of the Spirit and say, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Okay, I'm working on that, but I'm getting there. How about our church? Is Summit bearing fruit? Are our ministries bearing fruit? And I ask that question this morning because there's, a, there's an important truth that we need to understand. And it's not easy. And it's this. Unfruitful branches get cut off. They get cut off. And we might have some answers that we want to throw out there. From, from the passage in Matthew, the religious people who thought they had it, they said, we have Abraham as our father. So they're claiming their inheritance. And they look at us and they say, you young whippersnapper, I was here before Summit. I've been here. I have the original South Coast t-shirt. I could tell you, everybody that's been baptized in South Gorham Baptist Church for the past 40 years. But the reality is that when we get to heaven, if we want to show him our summit card, that's not going to be good enough. To simply say, look how many Sundays I checked off on my attendance card, it's not going to be good enough. The second thing is in our passage in Mark. So if you go to Mark 11, starting in verse 12, it says, On the following day when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if it could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. So we might say, well, you know, I've got leaves. Look at my branch. I've got leaves. This is, this is so beautiful, and we're doing all these things and, and, and everything like that. But how is he getting nutrients? How is he getting fed? How is he getting watered? How long is it going to look like this? Because this is what I cut for the first morning, for the first service. It's already wilting. When we try and do it on our own way, and we'll get to that in, uh, when we hit John 15, talking about being in the vine. When we try and, and work on our own and have nice pretty leaves, it doesn't take long for them to wilt. How about this one? What's this good for? fire. This isn't, what, is, what are you going to do with this? And that's what happens, is that we try and think, well, you know, look at all these leaves that I have. You know, I, I, I might not have fruit, but man, does the tree look good. You know, and I realized that when we have trees in, with leaves, but no fruit, that's why we have things like Babylon B and John Christ. And if you don't know who they are, you need to check it out because we go like this, right? We have the appearance of being Christian and we just look like fools. So somebody looks at us and he says, you know, hey, hey, how's your fruit? You know, are you bearing fruit? He's like, oh, oh, I am so offended. Do you know that my first two presets on my radio are K-Love and Air One? I am good. I, I've got it, okay? You know, what are you listening to? And so we think that if we have all the trappings of being healthy, of looking healthy, then it'll be enough. But that's not what God looks for because nobody can eat Leaves, dead leaves. So often, our spiritual walk looks like we're on a treadmill. 
And there's a, there's a destination and there's a journey that God wants to bring us on as he grows fruit in our life and in our church. And we're back at the starting line, breaking a sweat on a treadmill, like, God, I'm running. Look, I'm running. Look, I'm running. You know, look at me. I'm, I'm breaking a sweat. And he's like, you haven't gone anywhere. And we're just on that mouse wheel, just running, doing what we think is going to uh, please people. And it's all about our appearance. So we can claim our inheritance, we can claim our appearance. But if there's no fruit, guess where we're headed? Into the fire. Real easy to hear. How about our church? If we have a full calendar, if we have all the trappings of a church that's healthy, and we do all these things and we, we give the appearance of well, look at what Summit's doing, but we're not bearing fruit. God's going to come in with his winnowing fork and do some work. So if you look around this morning, hoping that nobody realizes that you're not bearing fruit, there's hope. There's hope. And it's in John 15. Starting with verse 1, it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. Pause right there. For apart from me, he can do nothing. Well, we can do a lot of things. Do you know that? We can do a lot of things. But when he says, apart from me, you can do nothing, what he's talking about is what we've been saying in this church, is that there are two things that last forever. Your soul and the word of God. So you can do a lot of things, but they're not going to mean anything. So he's talking, if you, if you want to be in the vine, then you'll do something that matters. Because apart from him, you can do nothing that will last. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown in the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you may bear fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Abide in him. What does that mean this morning? What does it mean to abide in Christ? It's related to the word abode, which is our, our house, our home. It's where we live. It's where we daily go. It's where we rest our head. It's where we spend time. It's where we are comfortable. It's where we go. It's me in Christ and Christ in me. And that is what we need, is to be in the vine with Christ. Because, you know, it doesn't matter— how much you know God. It doesn't matter how much you know his voice. What matters is if God knows your voice. What matters is that when you get to heaven, God says, there's a familiar face. Him I know. Her I remember. I've spent many conversations with her. Does God know you this morning? Do you abide in him? And there's two things that we need to know about abiding. The first one is that abiding in Christ and being in the vine means pruning. And that's not easy for us to hear because it's painful and it hurts. But what you need to understand this morning is that when God prunes your life and when you open yourself up and embrace that, you will become even more fruitful. Because anybody that has a desire to bear fruit will do whatever it takes. It's just like an athlete. 
Does LeBron James stop practicing basketball? No, because he knows that he wants to get better. Anybody that's passionate about something will be willing to put in the effort to get better. The second thing is that abiding means cutting off. Branches that don't bear fruit. And we might look at this and say, Wow, I know it's not bearing fruit, but please don't let it go. I need to hold on to this. You see, this has been here for a long time. I've had this branch for a long time. But the thing about branches that don't produce fruit and dead branches is that they still suck energy from the tree. They still take life out of you. So even if you've had that relationship for a long time, you need to let God take the clippers to it and cut it off. You need to understand that there are some things that are more important than holding on to what you've done. You need to be able to let go of mistakes just because you spent a long time making them. And there's something you need to know this morning if it's, if it's difficult to hear. And if you're starting to get nervous because you realize and you're looking around and you're like, I don't know where my fruit is. Is that this is something that takes time. We planted blueberry bushes three years ago, and except for the one that I weed whacked, we are just starting to see a few berries. That was, a, that was a bad day. That was a bad day. But this stuff takes time. This is what sanctification means. This is a process that through your life, you begin to bear fruit. And maybe at first, it's small. And we got home from camp, and I saw two blueberries on my bush, and I ran inside. And I said, did you see the fruit? Did you see the fruit? We got two blueberries. And God looks at it, and he says, yeah, I know. Wait until next season. Wait until I do. Wait until you see what next season has. It's a process of allowing God to work through you, to prune you. And what happens, and the way that this works when we abide in the vine, as we begin to bear much fruit, is that we can ask and we begin to pray. And what we can see is that amazing things begin to happen through this fruit. Because this is what we're called to. And if we go back to Matthew, or uh, I mean Mark 11, and we see the end of this passage with the fig tree, the next day in verse 20, as they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered. And Jesus answered him, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Do you pray those kinds of prayers? Do you pray for mountains in your life to be thrown into the sea? Or do you ask that God simply gets you through the day? God is calling us to pray for mountain-moving fruit in our lives. And maybe you've never done that, but I want to invite you this morning to begin to pray and really, truly believe in your own prayers. Not some kind of last-ditch, Hail Mary, 
Maybe God will answer it. I don't know. I don't have anything else left. I'm at the end of my rope. Why not? Let's throw it up and see if God answers it. (laughs) No, that's not trusting God. We need to believe and ask in his name and see God come through in our lives. We need to see that fruit begin to grow. And this morning as you're sitting here thinking, yeah, you know, you're right. You know, I've been, I've been dealing with this, this anger for 40 years, and, you know, it's, I think I might be getting to see some, some breakthrough and, you know, or, uh, you know decades of, of being impatient. If it's taking you that long, you're doing it wrong. And I'm not saying that you need to be perfect now, but we need to start praying, God, you need to do something in my life. I need to start seeing a difference. You need that in your life, and we need that in this church. What would it look like if we began to pray mountain-moving prayers? What kind of fruit would that look like? I know what I want for this church and what I want for myself. The kind of fruit that I want is disciples. That's what we want for this church. We want you to be discipled and we want you to make disciples. Because that's the way that this works. That's the way that we transform lives. And I want to paint a picture as the worship team comes up of what it could look like. In Isaiah 27, chapter uh, chapter 27, verse 6. In the days to come, Jacob shall take root Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and get this fill the whole world with fruit what a picture that is what an image of Summit Community Church going forth putting out shoots and producing fruit because that's what we're called to this morning. And if you're, if you're really in a place where you're kind of scared of, you know, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be cut off. You know, I gotta, maybe I could tape some fruit onto my branches or, or, or genetically modify some fruit so it grows and I get, you know, oranges the size of beach balls or something like that. And you're, and you're coming from a place of fear. You need to change your perspective this morning because, yes, it is scary. And yes, The text is very clear. Branches that do not produce fruit are cut off. And they are thrown in the fire. That's not a gray area, okay? That's not something that we can go back and forth and say, well, you interpreted this way, I interpreted that way. How many times when three passages we see, no fruit, it's done. The way that we need to approach this this morning is understanding just how good fruit tastes. Because when we offer our fruit up to God and when we, when we, when we see him glorified through our fruit, man, does he love it. And you will love it too, trust me. When you go and you pick a blueberry off the bush and you eat it and it's juicy and fresh and sweet. Man, do you want more blueberries? Just ask my daughter. It's blueberries for Sal, just just all day. That's the way to do it, okay? Is you taste how good the fruit is, how good it is to glorify God through transformed lives, through benefiting others, through being more loving, more peaceful, more gracious, more patient, through praying, I need somebody to sit in that seat 
and next week he's there because you invited him. I need this relationship mended. And God comes through and heals that brokenness. You pray, God, I need you to deliver in this way, and your bill gets paid. Man, when he sees you offer that up, and you guys just get to partake in that fruit, you just want to go back for more. That's the way that we need to approach this this morning. Is that ever since the creation with Adam and Eve in the garden, they were to tend the ground and produce fruit. That's what we are called to do as the body of Christ. I love, when we were kids, we had apple trees in our backyard, and we used to climb up the tree, and we would just sit there and eat those apples. And we would bring up bags that we would fill, and we'd bring them to our mom, and she would make apple pie, good apple pie. And we would run out to it because we knew how good it tasted. So as we sing this song, Will you begin to ask in Jesus' name for the mountains to be thrown into the sea in your life? Will you open up your heart and say, God, prune, go ahead, have your way? Will you believe in him? Will you trust him? Will you believe in your own prayers this morning? Because I don't want us to look like this. Because I know where this is going. Let's pray.